So I just wanted to quickly show you how you can get electromagnetic waves from the laws that we've talked about so far. So first of all, Gauss's law. I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can read it on your own. Using the divergence theorem, you can write Gauss's law as the divergence of E is equal to the charge density, rho, divided by E0. For magnetic fields, the divergence of the magnetic field is zero because there are no magnetic charges. So Ampere's law, using Stokes' theorem, you can rewrite the version of Ampere's law we had and find this differential version of Ampere's law. The curl of B depends on J, which is the current density, current per unit area, and the time dependence of the electric field. Also, using Stokes' theorem, you can change Faraday's law into a differential form. The curl of E, the negative of the time derivative of the magnetic field. So these differential forms of Gauss's law, of essentially Gauss's law for magnetism, of Ampere's law, and of Faraday's law, are called Maxwell's equations. These top two equations don't have any time dependence in, in them, so they're just statics. But the bottom two equations have time dependence. Uh, the funny thing is, when you add this time dependence, you end up mixing E and B in the same equation. Here's B on one side and E on the other. Here's E on one side and B on the other. So putting in a time dependence mixes, in, mixes up the electric and magnetic fields, as you already know. So what we're going to do is, is use these equations to write a dynamical equation, one that has time, for just one of the fields, so just the electric field. So how are we going to do that? Well, think of this fourth equation that take del cross this equation. So del cross del cross E on one side, and del cross minus ddt of B on the other. The reason I want to do that is because I can switch the spatial and the time derivatives. And instead of having del cross partial with respect to t of b, I can have partial with respect to t of del cross b. And when I put del cross b that way, then you can see that I can replace del cross b with things that have e. And I do that down here, so now I have an equation that does not have magnetic field in it. Similarly, we could have produced an equation that did not have electric field, but I'm just going to do the part that doesn't have magnetic field in it. We can simplify this, and we're going to, to talk about uh, light, which can travel through a vacuum. And we can simplify this by saying, let's worry about free space. Let's worry about a vacuum, a place where there aren't any electric charges or currents. Then J is 0, so that term goes away. Also, del dot E. Del dot E depends on the charge density. If there's no charges, del dot E is 0. So that makes that, that simplifies that a little bit, too. So that we end up with this del cross del cross E here on the left. We have a second time derivative of E on the right. And one of the questions is, what is del cross del cross E? So I mean, it's clearly a vector. But we'll, let's write out the x component of this whole equation. So the x component of E, the second derivative of Ex with respect to t. And then the x component of del cross del cross E just kind of write it all out in gory detail. What do we get? Well, del cross del cross E, the x component, would be partial with respect to y of the z component of del cross z, del cross E minus partial with respect to z of the y component of del cross E. Write that out in gory detail. I can factor out two pieces. There's a partial with respect to y of partial e x partial y. So that's the second derivative. There's a partial with respect to z of partial e x partial z. So that's the second derivative. They both have minus signs. I can switch the order of the differentiation and the other two terms are, are these two terms here. We're in free space, which means we don't have electrical charges, which means the divergence of the E is zero. Here's the divergence written out. And two of the terms in the diver divergence are sitting right there. 
since the divergence has to be zero, those two terms have to be the negative of partial ex partial x. And so you see when I plug that in there, I find out that this del cross del cross e, the x component, is just equal to that. And so here's our equation. Here's this term from the del cross del cross e, the x component. And here's the x component on the right. Similarly, you could write this whole thing for y components, this whole thing for z components. If you write out the entire vector equation, it looks like this. e is a vector here, e is a vector there. This del squared just refers to how you take the derivative. It's called the Laplacian of the electric field. So what do we have? We have this set of derivatives, second derivatives, with respect to spatial coordinates. And we have a second derivative with respect to time coordinates. This is called a wave equation for ex. ex can be a function of x or y, or it's x, y, z, and t. It's called a wave equation because traveling waves, wave functions, like this one right here that you know from uh, previous physics courses. This is a wave equation. K is a wave vector. Omega is the frequency. This is a possible solution of that equation. Solution of that equation in the sense that if I take this e sub x, this one right here, e0 is the amplitude. K is a wave vector. Omega is a frequency. Those are all constants. There's a variable z, because this is a wave traveling in the z direction. I happen to have chosen one, that one. And t is time. This is the x component. So it's a transverse wave. The wave is traveling in the z direction, and I'm looking at oscillations of the x component of the electric field perpendicular to the traveling direction. If we plug this in there, plug it in, take some derivatives, cancel out cosine functions on both sides, cancel out e0 on both sides, we end up with k squared equals mu0 e0 omega squared. The two derivatives with respect to time bring down omega twice. Two derivatives with respect to z bring down k twice. But of course you should know by now that omega squared over k squared is the speed squared. That tells us that the speed is 1 over mu0 e0 square rooted. You can calculate that. It turns out it's the speed of light. So this just suggests something that we know now to be true, which is that light is an ele electromagnetic wave. Different frequencies, we give different names. Radio waves are low frequencies. Other kinds of waves are higher and higher frequencies, which means shorter wavelengths. Uh, the general categories are, are radio waves at low frequencies. Microwaves are at higher ranges of frequencies. Then you tend to name it far infrared light, and then infrared light. And then comes the visible light, the visible frequencies, the frequencies that our eye can sense. Ultraviolet light starts to get a tiny bit dangerous to us as you get higher frequencies. And then x-rays and gamma rays are even more dangerous, but at much higher frequencies. They're all light. You, all, you can call any of them light.